Hello, and welcome to V2V Podcast Survivor Series. Today we are going to be taking an in-depth look into Diamond Ranch Academy and dissecting what they claim to be as to what we think they are. We're not just claiming who they are. We're letting Diamond Ranch Academy tell people who they are in their own words. Here we go. Diamond Ranch Academy is a residential treatment center and so-called therapeutic boarding school in Hurricane, Utah. It serves adolescents with, um, this is and now, it should be said that <clears throat> the stuff I'm reading here and talking about comes directly from their Wikipedia page. So it's important to understand that Again, this is not advocacy. This is their, these are their own words. So they claim to treat various issues, including ADHD, uh, predominantly inattentive ADHD, like, you know, the, the kids that just don't appear to be listening in class using what they call, uh, real life transition program, which we'll get into later. You know, cause what is that? You know, that's, that's a, right. That's some lingo that really doesn't mean anything, real-life transition program, but it's important to kind of put a, a pin in that. That includes peer participant judicial system, which uses citations, fines, and an appeal process. And you're familiar with this stuff. Very. And there's an emphasis on participants solving, quote, real-life problems, and they enroll people uh, between the ages of 12 and, and 18 plus, it's, um, I think that girls max out at 18 and boys, uh, boys are 18 and older. So this place was founded in Boise, Idaho in 1999 by a guy named Rob Diaz and later moved to Utah, uh, where it is now outside of the town of hurricane and that's really what we're getting into not necessarily what where they were what they did in the past because we're focusing on places that are now currently opening open and operating so their motto is healing families one youth at a time and their education programs are accredited by the northwest accreditation commission um, yeah. We can also get into what they're about too. It's not necessary. People, because I'll just pause for a second. Because sometimes people hear, like, "Oh, it's an accredited institution," um, and that may mean less than some people think it means. It's an outside body that says, "Yes, this school is following particular guidelines that are set out so that kids can actually get an education." Regardless of the fact that the outside body can also be, like, made up of the inside body. It doesn't necessarily mean that the institution is always following those practices, too. And that's another thing that we're going to kind of explore about their the education part of this place. So mm-hmm. uh, that's kind of who they are, uh, briefly. And, and we're talking about kids with attention tension deficit hyperactivity disorder. But, and this is this is a fact, Diamond Ranch Academy is not a mental health facility and they're not licensed or qualified as a mental health facility. So right off the bat, there's a big red flag because in their own words, they're saying, hey, we can help you, your kid with this mental disorder, the di- you know, a medical diagnosis. So that should be a big warning And they also claim to treat uh, drug addiction as well. So it's a really broad scope that they're saying that they will cover. You know, it it sounds like something that if it was presented in the right way to a worried parent, they might, you know, say, oh, well, that sounds, that sounds pretty reasonable. But uh, as we, as we go on, we'll see that that really isn't the case. Um, they go on to say at the treatment center, 
uh, student, this is in quotes, this is, this is their language, students experience a normal, safe, structured high school experience without the negatives of public school. This is a boast on their websites. And then according to uh, an admissions counselor named Sean Ellsmore, who still works there, and we'll get, a, we'll get into his background a little bit too, he claims that 60 to 70 percent of the students graduate from the academy and the average day is between 10 and 12 months long with less than 5 percent of those who graduate returning because they have, quote, relapsed. Now, that doesn't sound like a school to me. So far, it sounds like they're holding themselves out to be some kind of drug treatment center. Cost $7,000 a month. And enrollment varies, but typically there are anywhere between 150 and 200 students enrolled at any given time, both uh, girls and boys. There's more information that they want to present about themselves, about their application process. So they say that there are several factors that will help determine if uh, Diamond Ranch Academy is right for you. So what, what they're doing here, this tactic that they're employing right now is is they're trying to show that they're somewhat exclusive, like or picky about who might be even qualified to come in. Like it kind of gives them an allure of of something that maybe uh, isn't reachable for. It also kind of gives the illusion that they have specialists who will sort of figure out what is correct for your child and who know exactly what's right for your child. You know, in admissions, right? In missions, yeah, it's so important, right? The the front door to this place. When we get into who actually is kind of at that front door, determining if you're qualified or if DRA is right for your child, you you might be surprised. They say the average length is ten to twelve months. Uh, monthly rates. Uh, range from six thousand to twelve thousand five hundred dollars a month, and is typically private pay, meaning no insurance. Like they're presenting this idea that this is the best thing going. They even call themselves a premier. It, it just kind of makes me sick when I when I say these things, but they call themselves the, the premier boarding school in America. And then they ask about commitment. Are you able to commit to this? Uh, yeah. about working together to determine whether work, these words are so important because these are their words. They say, first we work together to determine whether or not Diamond Ranch Academy is a good fit for your son or daughter. We are very selective in the students we admit to our school in order to ensure that they have a great experience as well as the best likelihood for success after returning home or going on to college. Right there, it kind of undermines what they claim to be about. So if they're dealing with so-called troubled teens, but they only want, they only say they want the, the ones that they can help, well, yeah. how do they determine that, right? Like, in... And I think the answer, we just touched on it, it's whether or not you can afford $10,000 a month to enroll your kid there. I, right. I highly doubt that they're going to turn away someone with that kind of deep, those kinds of deep pockets. Now, do they have any type of uh, scholarship program or sort of thing for, like, underprivileged kids who might want to go there? They have a, an asterisk telling people to contact an admissions counselor to discuss payment options. So you can mortgage your house. Oh yeah. You know, if you yeah. if you're lucky enough yeah. to own a home, you can you can mortgage your home and and be paying off Diamond Ranch Academy for 20 years. Mm -hmm. if, if your child's needs are beyond our scope of expertise, which I think is an important word, that expertise. Yeah. We will refer you to the appropriate professionals. Now, who might that be? I have no idea. Like, they're claiming to be all these things, this comprehensive program, 
to help these teens who are in distress, parents, you know, distraught over their, I guess, misbehaving kid or kid who isn't listening or whatever the case might be. Mm -hmm. When I think about teenagers, I really am having a hard time differentiating between normal teenage behavior and and the type of of kids they're trying to describe here because you know if a, if a kid is quote that bad they say they want to send that child to a more qualified professional so but they want to let you know that you can feel free to contact us at any time as you go through the website mm -hmm. or as you complete the application we're here to help. The last thing they want to let people know is that Diamond Ranch Academy isn't for everyone. Not everyone who applies is accepted. We only accept students we strongly believe we can help. That is kind of the, the beginning, the introduction of who these people say they are. Yes. Yeah. The next area that I kind of want to get into briefly, it's the Utah State requirements um, for residential programs. Now, these are the rules that schools like this and facilities like this are, are supposed to abide by. There's not a federal standard. Each state makes up their own, own rules for how schools in their state function. In Utah, it says that... Um, Residential programs in the state of Utah are required to employ a manager who will oversee the day-to-day -day resident supervision and facility operations, and a CPR certified staff member must be available at all times. All staff, volunteers, and employees will be screened and given a background prior to working with the residents or within the facility. Okay. Professional staff should include a licensed physician a licensed psychologist, and a licensed mental health professional, and any unlicensed staff will be supervised by a licensed clinical professional at all times. So if you want to, if we want to break that down a little bit, what, what it says, you know, in layman's terms is that there needs to be, um, now when they talk about staff, they mean people that are on site. They mean people that are working there. Um, right. There should be a doctor, a psychologist, and a mental health professional at, at all times on site. This is for parents who are being sold the idea that sending their kid here is a good idea. What we're doing is using their own information to show anybody who is ever considering sending their kid to this place in particular or one of these facilities in general that it's a really, really bad idea and that it's uh, it's not something that you ever want to do. You don't have to speculate about uh, about why these aren't uh, good places to send anybody. Like, they're going to do it for us. All residential facilities are required to maintain a minimum ratio of one staff to every four residents at all times during the daytime. However, night staff may be reduced depending on the size of the facility. Now, and that's because at night, generally speaking, people are sleeping. Uh, staff in residential facilities will have a separate living space from the residents, and all male and yeah. female living quarters will be separate and supervised. Um, so if you if staff lives there, they can't live with the kids. A single bedroom may house up to four residents or two with disabilities. That's interesting because the disabilities part is pretty broad. A disability yeah. can certainly be a, a mental health issue. Uh, all residential facilities and treatment centers in Utah must be up to date on all safety and building health codes. 
get into meals. They must be approved by a registered dietitian. And all facilities are required to note and accommodate the special nutrition nutritional needs or allergies of the resident consumers. These kids are really customers. You know, the parents yeah. are customers of the service that's being provided. It's the product. The, the parents are the customer. Oh, well, sure. That may be how it, things actually operate. Yeah. But in the, in the real world, like if I'm a resident somewhere and I'm, and I'm paying for it through my parents, you know, yeah. and, and you're, and you're giving me bad food or, or food that doesn't meet my nutritional requirements or my, uh, dietary requirements, you know, um, that's a problem. And even sure. the wording, resident consumers, like they're consuming the food. They're, you, you have to treat these, you have to treat people well. Like, that's all it's really saying. Um, it goes into, you know, storing hazardous chemicals and medication in, in a, a proper way. Um, Qualified staff, only qualified staff will administer, supervise, and record medication dosage and effects, which means medical staff. Not just some guy who, uh, I don't, I don't even got a high school diploma or he has a business degree. Like, that doesn't count, you know? No. Nope. Uh, all curriculum must be approved by the State Office of Education, as well as nationally accredited and all teachers must be qualified in their area of instruction. So it should operate just as a normal school, a normal public school where people have licenses and degrees and they're, and they're qualified to teach in their subject. Uh, each resident will receive an individualized treatment plan upon arrival, and it will be updated as they progress through the program. Monthly schedules will be available to both residents as well as their parents or guardians upon request. Individual treatment plans may include skills development as well as a variety of counseling options, including weekly group, couple, and family counseling sessions. So, you know, just saying that uh, there's going to be some real therapy going on. And and the people who are engaging in the therapy process whether that's the parents or the students or both, they have a right to have updates and know, you know, what's going on, access to the records. Right. Normal stuff, like that would just like, just as it would occur in any, uh, <clears throat> any therapist's office, you know, outside. Welcome to the V2V Podcast Survivor Series, Diamond Ranch Academy. Part two, lawsuits and trouble. All right, so this next section involves um, lawsuits and some specific trouble that Diamond Ranch Academy has faced over the years. And you may begin to see some patterns as I go through this. So get into the idea <clears throat> of what the what the trouble is with this place. A couple of years ago, there was a, uh, a lawsuit filed against Diamond Ranch Academy alleging that a therapist sexually groomed and assaulted a 16-year-old girl named Hannah Wilkin. She agreed to have her name on the record um, because she feels that it's important that she be as out front as possible to encourage right. other students to come forward, and it's pretty brave. So here's what happened. The lawsuit alleges that the incident occurred multiple times in April and May of 2016. So this is fairly recent. Uh, the treatment facility caters to troubled teens, according to its website, and according to the court documents, the uh, a newly licensed therapist intern assigned to providing counseling services to the 16-year-old victim used his position of power and authority to prey on Hannah Wilkin. 
Troy Ammon Carter is the name of the, uh, the therapist. He told her minor details about his own sex life, uh, questioned her about her own sexual history, and made inappropriate comments about her physical appearance. And additionally, the complaint states that he straddled Wilkin and unhooked her bra while providing a back massage in his office without a chiropractic license. That's an, that's an important um, distinction to make, that that anybody on the staff who's not authorized and licensed to perform a, a particular act like like a massage, like you have you have to be a massage therapist or a chiropractor to legally be able to do something like that. And he knew yeah. that. You know, yeah. you can't just start groping uh, teenage girls. So Carter would attempt to uh, disparage her parents in an attempt to gain her trust and uh, and started to detail inappropriate dreams he was having about, about her. The windows of his counseling office were covered with uh, brown butcher paper. Wilkins attorney Craig Vernon said that the therapist used the paper to cover up the windows to literally cover up the sexual assaults while they were happening. So, you know, if you're in a room, in a locked room or a closed room with windows and you're a therapist and you're talking to a young lady about issues she might be having, why would you not why would you not want someone to see that as hap- you know, happen? So you're gonna put paper I don't, up on the windows. I, I don't first of all, like if you're a program manager and you see that a young lady is being taken off to a room to talk to a male therapist, why would you accept that he has his windows taped up? Like, it's interesting that you would say that because the very next sentence, her lawyer says, it's very curious to me that that would go unnoticed, right? Hey, hey, where's the new therapist guy? You know, the new licensed therapist guy with the, uh, who's uh, counseling the kid, the girl. Oh, he's in his office. Oh, where's his office? Oh, oh, the one with the paper on the window. Problem is, though, Marcus, in this situation, there's kind of a ranking thing that goes on where okay. I feel like the therapist is, is above the unit manager. There's a reason that happens. It's the fallacy of authority. So basically... The mindset here is that the therapist is like, look, I have a master's degree, right. and I have, I have a license, and I, I'm a professional therapist, and I know stuff. I totally outrank you. So the manager, he has no clue regarding what's appropriate, even though he should. Like, he can kind of plead ignorance and also say that, oh, the therapist said so. So there are these power plays that occur because of a particular document or license, even though it's absolutely wrong, even though the manager is actually in charge of the therapist. These are the same ideas that made Hannah Wilkins' lawyer so curious about why... That would just be considered normal. Right, so you yeah. make a good point. Yeah, it is a fallacy of authority because the whole thing is fallacy of authority. The entire thing. Talk to Bob. So, as it, as this kind of came down, Rick Carter was terminated in May of 2016 for inappropriate physical contact with another student. Wilkin came forward after, right? He was doing this to other kids and got fired for it. And then Hannah stepped up and said, hey, this this happened to me as well. Prior to the alleged incidents, DRA required Carter to sign a document pledging he would stop all physical contact with his patients. He had previously been reprimanded for inappropriate contact with multiple male students. And the lawsuit claims that the treatment center provided the perfect environment for victims to be groomed and sexually abused due to inadequate supervision 
in internal policies. And we're, again, when we, when we get to these people's qualifications, it will be very easy to see why this kind of thing was allowed to go on. So it goes on to say just that the DRA did nothing to protect these vulnerable girls who were isolated and far away from their families. They did nothing at all until it got to the point where they decided they had to fire Troy Carter for continuously ondling and being sexually inappropriate with boys and girls. Washington County Attorney's Office ultimately declined to file charges due to a lack of sufficient evidence. He said, she said kind of situation because, of, of course, you know, the paper on the windows might have helped that. If you can't <laughs> see what's going on, it looks like Diamond Ranch got rid of their problem before because they knew about it. I mean, obviously, they had him sign papers. Right. So they elected to they elected to get rid of him before the heat got too great where they would become more and more liable the longer this guy was around. It doesn't this it doesn't need to get to this point. Like parents, if you're listening, this stuff goes on. It's documented. It's not fiction. If you send your kid away to this place, things like this happen. And you may not know about it. It took this guy getting fired for Hannah Wilkin to be able to uh the you know, courage to finally be able to speak up about it because that guy was no longer around. Oh, the year the year before in 2015, a teacher there was arrested for possessing hundreds of images depicting child pornography on a personal cell phone and a computer at the school. So this guy, this guy's a piece of work. So yep. Chad Huntsman is his name, and his wife, who also worked at Diamond Ranch, were both terminated following the arrest. Yes. In February of, I, I think February 2017, Huntsman was sentenced to 22 and a half years in federal prison, and the charges against his wife were dismissed due to a lack of intent. They got this guy 22 and a half years in prison. This guy might be teaching your child. He might have been your, like, that's yeah. horrific. And, and people might say, well, look, there are, there are bad apples everywhere and, and there are bad people everywhere. <clears throat> but here's the, here's the major difference. So you're spending thousands and thousands of dollars to send your kid away far, far away from you to a private place where you don't know these people. You can't talk to them. You don't know them. You can't drive down the street and talk to your kid's uh, teacher. They don't live in your community. Um, so even though there are there are bad people all over the place, this is extra bad because they're totally isolated from you, the parent. You have no idea. I'm kind of speechless. I but why did they what what was the thing that they let her go on for lack of intent what does that mean she didn't intend those pictures to be on on the phone and the computer she didn't put them there and if if she had if these were her children and she uh have ignored I something mean, going on in the house well, right right okay. she could have been she could have been a different kind of victim in this case, so there's another, there's some other incidents that occurred. A13, we had the suicide. Uh, kid hung yeah. himself in the shower. Yeah. And follow, following that, the facility decided to outfit all their showers with collapsible rods. Right. So that, so that students could no longer kill themselves in the shower. It's not like anyone like looking into why this person did this. It's simply making it so no one can do it. It kind of gets to the heart of something here. Again, like, it's, it's easy to lose sight, I guess, it kind of when you get into the weeds like this, that what this place claims to be. Yeah. Therapeutic boarding school. Dealing with mental health. They're dealing with, uh, inattentive, depressed kids. They're dealing with, or they're saying they're helping 
these kinds of things. So, look, if, if a kid kills himself, that happens too, right? Like, these, all these things that we're detailing happen in the real world. But when things like this happen at a place like this, but then to treat the problem by not doing anything beneficial for the children, it's another one of those big, giant red flags. Like, do you really want to send your kid who you think is having tr this much trouble to a place that doesn't care about, they care more about the the look and the appearance of it being a, <clears throat> a nice place than actually treating the children that, that are in their care? Like, no way. The best yeah. option is to not send your kid away at all and, and man up and be a parent. You know, if I could throw my two cents in. But it really makes you wonder what isn't being discovered and what's going on right now. Because that was 2016 when uh, the girl was getting groomed to be sexually assaulted. So that's it's two years later. You know, it's time. Yeah. There, it sound, yeah. sounds like they're due for another incident. That's and true. maybe, maybe what we're doing right now is like counter to that incident. Maybe we're the incident. You know, maybe we're like, hey, we we got you now. You know, seriously. Um, there there are going to be a lot of people listening to this, and I hope so. Um, it's really important that that all of this information gets out there. And I think I need to take a break. Thank you for listening to the V2V Podcast Survivor Series, Diamond Ranch Academy Part 2, Lawsuits and Trouble. Please stay tuned for Part 3, Admissions. And don't forget to give us a like and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. This is the V2V Podcast Survivor Series, Diamond Ranch Academy. Part three, regulation. As residential boarding schools. As residential boarding schools. No, they shouldn't be. They should be considered completely different, you know. But but the stories that we constantly hear, as you know from personal experience, and all of these abuses and mistreatment, it's real. It really happens. It's happening right now. It's happening at this place, the Diamond Ranch Academy. The truth is that Diamond Ranch Academy takes any teenager, regardless of the issues, as long as there's money involved. And the tragedy of all this is, is they either don't get it or don't care to get it or um, have no interest in, in actually helping anybody, which really seems to be the truth of the matter. So I guess the bottom line with all this is that, you know, we here at V2V will continue to have Diamond Ranch Academy on our radar or our gut feeling based on evidence is that something is very wrong here. Extremely. We get into the idea of supervision. What happens is closer to punishment. The lawyer for Diamond Ranch Academy pops up. Steven Bangerger, and he says that the program uses restraints only when students threaten the safety of themselves or others. Quote, restraints have never been used for purposes as punishment, he said. He goes on to say that Diamond Ranch Academy does not have a notion of punishment. They don't recognize the idea of punishment there which is kind of strange because uh, punishment exists. To say that you don't have a notion of it is kind of denying the fact that the concept of punishment is a thing. So it's, it's very tricky lawyer, lawyerly language here. So basically what he's saying is that whatever we do to the kids, we don't consider it punishment because we don't believe in punishment. So it gives them license to do whatever they want and then not call it punishment. That's really sick. It's very tricky. You know, these people are, are smart. They employ lawyers who 
who speak for them in this fashion. So he goes on to say that children alleging abuse should have talked to their therapist. They have a right to contact the child abuse hotline, and the kids have plenty of opportunities to complain. Now, that seems odd, considering what happened to the 16-year-old girl and her therapist. Is the hotline on campus? I mean, does that line lead to someone on campus? Are you then complaining to someone on campus? Because I had that experience in Texas. Really? So I'm wondering, yeah. They, he says they have the right to contact the child abuse hotline. That's too, it's too broad. When, yeah. where, do they, are they, are they being monitored? Uh, um, the kids have plenty of opportunities to complain. Well, we'll get into kind of what happens when kids complain. Uh, yeah. They may have the opportunity, but they may pay a pretty heavy price for complaining. So Diamond Ranch Academy's lawyers adamantly deny abuses ever occurred on the facility. They point out that their program, along with other facilities in Utah, are regulated and inspected regularly, and to some degree, they're right. So how are they right? What does that mean? So in 2005... Utah passed a bill requiring that facilities be licensed by the state. So to keep a license, a facility must be inspected at least once a year to make sure it is abiding by state rules. For example, children ought to see a therapist at least once a week. Restraints and solitary confinement may not be used for punishment. And mail is to be sent and received freely, provided safety requirements are met. Those, that's the, that's the heart of the bill. Right. So, if we want to take a closer look at that, so they have to be licensed. Diamond Ranch Academy is indeed licensed by the state. Um, and to keep their license, they need to have a regular annual visit by somebody some inspecting something there at the uh, facility every 365 days. So on that day, the inspector shows up and he or she looks around and everything looks great. And that inspector signs off, and it's fantastic. It's a it's a regular annual inspection. So, okay, they did it right once a year. But restraints and solitary confinement may not be used for punishment. Well, we just read a statement by their lawyer that they don't believe in the concept of punishment. So, right, restraints and solitary confinement may not be used for punishment actually means that restraints and solitary confinement can be used for any reason we see fit. Correct. And then mail is sent to be sent and received freely. Um, I don't know specifically about the mail. Provided safety requirements are met, I imagine... I imagine the state was thinking something along the lines of contraband in the mail, perhaps. I think that their, their mail is monitored. Fully. Right. That's kind of what I was about to say, that, that I think the state didn't mean when they wrote this that incoming and outgoing mail should be monitored. They want, they want to make right. sure that contraband isn't coming in and out of the place. Or, or right. weapons, or you know, things like that. <clears throat> that is kind of the regulatory bit. There's a big announcement on, on the inspection day, I can imagine, that, uh, hey, old Joe's going to show up and put on, you know, put out, put out all the fruit bowls. Now we're getting into, you know, who runs this place? You know, who are the people that actually are taking care of the kids? And the first stop at the Diamond Ranch Academy, of course, is intake. The parent got the fancy brochure. They got the phone call. They looked on the Internet. 
they got their money together. <laughs> They're ready to have a meeting with uh, nice people at intake. This has been an episode of the V2V Podcast Survivor Series, Diamond Ranch Academy. Stay tuned for part four, intake and admissions. And as always, thanks for watching. This is the V2V Podcast Survivor Series, Diamond Ranch Academy, part four, admission staff. Now we're getting into, you know, who runs this place? You know, who are the people that actually are taking care of the kids? And the first stop at the Diamond Ranch Academy, of course, is intake. The parent got the fancy brochure. They got the phone call. They looked on the Internet. They got their money together. They're ready to have a meeting with uh, nice people at intake. So what we're going to do here is take a look at at these people and who they are and their backgrounds and their work experience and, and in some cases a nice little blurb about uh, who they are because in some cases the staff they they write a little something about um, past experience or, or or what they're getting out of uh, working at Diamond Ranch a familiar name appears immediately Addie Diaz. Now, that's obviously a relation to the owner, Rob Diaz. I don't know if that's a daughter or a spouse, but that's really neither here nor there, but certainly related. She's um, a member of the intake staff, and uh, Diaz is not a licensed mental health nor medical professional in Utah. She doesn't have that kind of experience, so isn't qualified to determine mental health issues, medical issues. She has no basis for understanding that, so zero. But she does have an education. And what Addie Diaz has learned is she has a Bachelor of Science in PE. She's a, she's a K through 12 PE coach. So let's get into her work experience. Uh, she was the girls soccer assistant coach at Diamond Ranch Academy. She is the girls' basketball assistant coach at Diamond Ranch Academy. And she's an administrative assistant at Diamond Ranch Academy. So th remember, this is an intake person. Yeah, they're, this is like the first person that you're going to meet when you want to send your kid here. It, it's rather unclear about who does specifically what, because a lot of these people have several jobs. The other... Okay, here we go. Angie Kazir. She also works in intake, <coughs> admission, right? Um, Angie attended one year at Dixie College, which is the local community college, and enjoyed participating in general education courses while there. As soon as possible, I enrolled in cosmetology school at Heritage, this is cute, Heritage Hair Academy, H-A-I-R-I-T-A-G-E, Hair Academy, Heritage Hair Academy. I've always had a love for hair and creativity. I graduated from cosmetology school after completing the 2,000 required hours. I've continued my education with advanced hair cutting courses and advanced hair coloring courses and... She is also CPR certified and first aid certified. Angie Kazir, and she has some work experience too. She uh, is a certified lifeguard. She's a home salon owner. You know what? That's interesting. Home salons, like haircutting at home, is generally speaking without a license to do that there, illegal. That's not good. Wow. In most, it, well, in most cases, I mean, cosmetology is really highly regulated. I mean, it's it's like medical standards. Yeah. For haircutting stuff, because you're dealing with like, human body and potential bodily sure. fluids and things like that. Anyway, she's been a home salon owner for 13 years, and I, I wonder if she's got all her ducks in a row there. 
She's also a hairdresser at United Hairlines. Apparently, she makes custom jewelry at the Tom Design Shop. And last but not least, Angie Kazir. She's an admissions counselor at Diamond Ranch Academy. You call yourself a counselor. It means something, you know? Yeah. She's not an admissions assistant. She's not an admissions clerk. She's calling herself, and the school is calling her, an admissions counselor. So what that tells me is that when dear old Angie shows up with a distressed parent, perhaps, and a and maybe an obnoxious kid, I don't know what's going on, but when Angie shows up, she has the air of authority and professionalism because she is called an admissions counselor. Now, that, I mean, that's something that people, like, take notice of. Oh, counselor. So that's worrisome. Indeed. It's troubling because, because although I'm sure she's a fine hairdresser, I see nothing in her background that has anything at all to do with working with um, at-risk youth or counseling or admissions, like zero. It's appropriate to take a light tone here because it's so serious. Yeah. These are real people taking care of maybe, if, if you're listening, parent of Diamond Ranch Academy child, taking care of your kid or potential parent thinking about Diamond Ranch Academy, potentially your kid. If they were presenting the truth, or you I mean they, I guess they are presenting the truth. So it's it's a matter of you know you have to kind of dig into this. Like I, I did a fair amount of research to find this information out, which is all public, by the way. Yeah. But but again, the parent who's in some kind of need of relief, appropriate relief, or a situation that they don't know how to handle. This isn't the this isn't the solution with uh unexperienced people. So No. Let's move on. So next we have a gentleman by the name of Danny Burchard. And Danny is not a licensed medical health nor medical professional in Utah. He's also this is also admissions or intake. Okay. We call it admissions. His education, he has a Bachelor of Science degree from in Business Management from Western Governors University. He has an Associates of Science at Dixie State College, Certified Red Cross Instructor, and also something called a Certified Motive Trainer. I never heard that term. I don't know what a, mo a motive trainer is. But apparently he's a certified motive trainer. Have you ever heard that term? No. Uh, I didn't get a chance to look that up, but perhaps I'll, uh, I'll see if there's any information about what that might be. He also has some work experience. He was a communication systems analyst for the state of Florida a vocational coordinator with reemployment services. These are the two jobs he's had before Diamond Ranch Academy. And then he moved to O and A staff at Diamond Ranch Academy. Uh oh. You know what that is? No. Observation and assessment. So this is important because he is watching the new people when they come in. He's observing and assessing new students. It's called O&A now. It's a two-week period that Diamond Ranch Academy used to refer as being homeless. Right. It's a really important job. It's, I mean, it's a really important thing to be doing when you're bringing a kid into a, a, new, a new thing, a new environment. And you're you're the one who's supposed to be helping and guiding them through through a particular process. He's in no way qualified to do anything of that nature at all. So no. that was his first job too. 
And then he became wow. what's called head staff. And then he then he got uh, promoted to assistant program director. And now he is a program director at Lava Falls, which I believe is the older boys section. So he moved up the ranks. He's running the older boys section of the school. Wow. Without any any clear qualification to be able to do that. It's at times like this as we're going through this to remember all that boring stuff that we went through earlier about what the requirements are for facilities like this and the the professional requirements, certifications and licenses. And so far, these are the frontline staff who have zero, they just don't have anything to do with this field. And it's it's very troubling. Yeah. Okay, next we have Megan Hanks. Megan Hanks is a teacher. She has a Bachelor of Science degree. Um in biology at from Brigham Young. She is a certified teacher and she uh she's a tennis coach and she's a private was a private tutor and she was a middle slash high school and private tutor for seventeen years. So they do have a they do have a real teacher. It just, it makes you wonder, now this isn't anything negative necessarily, but it makes you wonder why Megan Hanks decided to, um, start working here as opposed to working at, uh, you know, a regular high school or a private tutor. She, I mean, she was a private tutor for eight years and a, a teacher for 17. So it just, you know, not anything bad, but it just makes you wonder. Like, what's going on there? They're paying her a lot of money, you know, perhaps. Could be. Then we have uh, Nicole Nicole Manukai. Nicole has an Associates of Science from Dixie State College. She has a high school diploma from Laurel High School, and she is CPR and first aid certified. Uh, it doesn't say what her degree is in. I think it's just kind of a, probably a general education degree. That's usually what an associate gets you. Nicole has worked on and off at Diamond Ranch for 10 years. Wow. That's, that's interesting, the on and off part. I took notice of that. Apparently, she's coming and going. Um, well, maybe she had a kid, though. You know, you never know. Could be. Right. So... She was a uh, work staff, kind of an entry level uh, staff member, and then she became a staff supervisor. And now right. she's an assistant. Now she's an assistant program director, which is uh, you know she's moving up the ladder too. the The whole idea of program director it sounds really important. To yeah, me. if you're going to call yourself that, or or that's like the title that you've earned, I would think you know, would have the title of something like program director would would be pretty well qualified in whatever program they were directing. Particularly in a multi-million dollar business, you know, uh, or, or school, you know, in itself, it's making <clears throat> millions of dollars a year. You right. would You would think, you know, you would think that this pro- person would be, you know, like a Harvard graduate or like a, a doctor or something, you know. Right. Yeah. I mean, or, you know, or at least like a some kind of clinic, clinical professional or some social worker, you know, something, something was something uh, you went to school for some time. Or you have some like thorough education in your field. This next, this next one is something else. So Rhonda Hafen. So her education is listed as CPR and first aid certified. Apparently she has no education other than that. I don't know why you wouldn't include your 
education other people have. Rhonda's work experience is really interesting considering her seeming lack of education. Her work experience is listed as an HR director. Wow. A vet, a vet technician. I don't get, I don't get it. How can you be a vet tech or, or a human resources director when the only education you have is that you're CPR and first aid certified? So uh, Rhonda has owned many businesses from a silk shop to a candy shop. Rhonda also enjoys working part time at a veterinary hospital as a vet technician. She enjoys pet sitting for people with pets that need extra help with meds or IV fluids. That's disturbing. Extremely. But the part about enjoying pet sitting for people with pets that need extra help with meds or IV fluids, is she shooting up dogs? Because that's not okay. You can't be, like, giving out meds to the... Where is she getting this medication from? The, the Valium that you give your dog is the same stuff that you take. The morphine that, that you're, you know, you, it's the same stuff. Um, that's, so that's, I mean, we don't know exactly what she's doing. She might be doing IDs, and I think that a doctor can write off for that, can't they? To a vet. To it attack. just seems weird. It just seems weird to me. Even if it's not sure. exactly, like, illegal. I, the whole sentence, I enjoy pet sitting for people with pets that need extra help with meds or IV fluids. It doesn't sound like pet sitting. That sounds like medical care. And yeah, as far as I know, to give medical care to an animal, you need to be a vet. You need to be a doctor. Right. You can't just like, hey, no, I work part-time at the vet's office. I know so, a lot about this stuff because I see it all the time at the vet's office right. that I work at. So I I might be a good fit for your... Anyway, enough. Yeah, yeah. keep going. So, okay, so Rhonda continues. She makes some comments about Diamond Ranch Academy. And she says, there are two reasons I work for, for Diamond Ranch Academy. One is that I know the owners personally and have known them for 30 years. Uh, okay, so she goes way back. She doesn't need any education because she's in the inner circle, so to speak. She's known the Diaz family for 30 years. I love Diamond Ranch Academy's approach to life as far as having the look and feel of a high school, yet have all of the therapy that's needed like a residential treatment center there every day that makes us special. And I don't even know what this lead does. I think she's also an admission. Uh, okay. Okay, so we have another Diaz family member. Riley. She's the weekend director. Sure. But Riley does not have a medical license or she a licensed medical mental health professional. She's the weekend director. No education, no nothing. Wow. Then we have uh, Sean Ellsmore. He comes up later. So Sean is not a licensed educator in Utah. He is an academic para-pro. That's his title. I think that means an academic para-professional, or a teacher's aide. Mm. So he graduated from... Centennial High School in 2004, went to the Community College of Southern Nevada, and he went to Dixie State University, and he went to Western Governors University, didn't get any degrees. Sean Ellsmore was going to two different universities at the same time. He was working this whole time, too, at Diamond Ranch Academy. Okay, so he was a customer service rep at U-Haul. He, it looks like he was there for about a year, and then he started working at Diamond Ranch Academy in February of 2007. He, he's an admissions counselor from 2011 to the present. But again, he's just another one of those cases like he doesn't have any background whatsoever in being the kind of person you want to be an admissions counselor at a school. 
So, okay. Coming to the end of an end of admissions, these are all admissions people. So and then we have a guy named Troy Spray. He's titled the Apparent Communication Director. So I guess this is the guy that uh, does all the talking with the moms and the dads. Right. So Troy Spray is not a licensed men- mental health nor medical professional in Utah. He graduated from Diamond High in 1991. He took computer information science at uh, American River College in Sacramento, California. He just looks like he just took courses there. His work experience is that he uh, looks like he was a certified mortgage broker. Then he became the head development staff at Diamond Ranch Academy. Then became staff supervisor. And now he's an assistant campus director. So he's he's a boost uh-huh. up there. Yeah. Yeah. That's all of the admissions staff. And now we get into the doctor or master's level therapist. What's interesting about their staff and uh Yeah. Is that they move let's think they moved around a lot from facility to facility. This has been the V2V Podcast Survivor Series, Diamond Ranch Academy. Stay tuned for part five, clinical staff. And as always, thanks for watching.